Richard Krause. How's everybody doing this morning? What do you want to talk about? I know we've not seen the movie, so it's going to be impossible to talk about it. So we can talk about the making of it. We can talk about it theoretically. We can talk about me selling out. We can talk about any number of things. <laughs> Except for the plot itself, apparently. But to be fair, we would have spent about 20 seconds talking about the plot. It's one of those movies. I love this movie to death, and you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it. If you're a movie geek... I think this, if you're a movie geek, you'll enjoy it because this is essentially what a buddy cop movie would have looked like if a movie geek made one because that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how, like, when I was a kid, you'd always read interviews about Spielberg and Lucas, and when they made Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars movies, they always referred to it as we just went back to our past, took the serials that we loved, and made our version of it. Now, I'm not saying, like, we got Raiders of the Lost Ark on our hands. We don't. I'll tell you right now, we don't. But I, I remember that when we were making this movie, and I was like, you know, I'm going to approach it the same way. Like, essentially, I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to my youth, and all the buddy cop movies I watched growing up, those were my serials, so to speak, because during the 80s, that's all they made. Um, and I'm going to try to make that now. And that's what we went, that's the kind of the direction we, we approached it with. We kind of dialed it back to go forward. So it's this weird low-tech movie that, that kind of plays currently, but... If you were alive in the 80s, it's very, very familiar. And the weird thing is watching people who were alive in the 80s, like my friend Malcolm saw it with me. And he'd been involved the whole step of the way. We finally saw the whole movie put together. I was like, what would you think? He's gone, it's well made, dude, it's well made. It's not one of my favorites of yours. I said, why? He's gone, I'm because I've seen this movie before. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I saw it when it was 48 hours. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. He's going, but the difference is, this is going to be somebody else's 48 hours. I said, do you really? And he said, yeah. He's going, did you think you were making the movie for me? And I was like, well, not you, Malcolm. But yeah, like, I thought I was making the movie for people my age. He's going, I don't think so, dude. I think you made this movie for 18-year-olds. I was like, really? I was like, because that would be exciting. Because they tell you in Hollywood, if you can make a movie for an 18-year-old, you can take 10 years off your life. You know, because you'll work another 10 years and shit. So I was like, I wasn't making the movie for that. I was making the movie for adults. And he goes, I don't think you did it. He's going, I don't think adults have use for this movie, dude, because they've seen 48 Hours. But there's a whole generation of people that don't have 48 Hours, and this could be that for them. I was like, wow, you're right. So that's where we are with the movie. It's funny. It's really funny. I'm proud of myself. I'll pat myself in the back. I can't believe I made it, because you look at Clark, you look at this, you'll be like, no way. But then you go like, well, he did have 15 fucking years. You know, most filmmakers, you can look at Clerks by the third movie, it would look like this. Yeah. Me, it took me a little longer. I was like Blue Tarski. It took me seven years. It's seven years of college down a fucking drain. So it all led to doing this. I'm so happy. It looks great. But let's stop talking about Cop Out now. <laughs> uh, about uh, Zach and Mary being sort of the last of a certain type of film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was. I wouldn't say the last of a certain type of film. Zach and Mary was represented a break for me. I had a huge emotional breakdown when Zach and Mary came out because I was expecting Zach and Mary to do closer to uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall business. That's what everybody said. They're like, this is going to be your, your, your biggest movie ever. This movie is going to be the biggest one. Hands down, it's easy. You can see it's going to make it. I was like, really, really? Like, oh, yeah, it's going to be the one. It's not going to do Apatow business, but you're going to do lower Apatow. You're going to do like something like Sarah Marshall business. I'll take Sarah Marshall business. That'd be awesome. We didn't do Sarah Marshall business. We wound up doing Kevin Smith business. Mm -hmm. And I was crestfallen. I was just destroyed by that. I was just like, all that work, and we just did the same fucking thing we always do. What am I doing? There's no point. I'm just I'm spinning my wheels here. I'm telling the same fucking stories, apparently. Nobody cares anymore. I'm irrelevant. Judd Apatow does what I used to do way better than I do. I should get out of this business. And I went and shut myself up in the library and started smoking lots of weed. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of weed and watching lots of hockey videos. That's where Hit Somebody comes from later on. But during that period where I was in the library licking my wounds and trying to figure out if I was relevant anymore while becoming a stoner at age 38 and watching hockey videos. <laughs> um, Jeff Robinov uh, entered the fray with the script for Cop Out and it was just like, hey man, uh, here's a script, I want you to read it. And I was like, all right. And I gave it a read and I was like, hey man, it's pretty funny. I don't know what I could add to it. We want me to, I don't think this script needs to be rewritten. And he's like, well, it's not for rewriting. We would like you to direct it. And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't, do that kind of thing. You know, you see what I do. And he's just like, ah, I saw the last one too. And he's like, I feel based on the last one. You're ready for this. I was like, you're shitting me based on Zach and Mary. You think I'm finally ready? He's like, yeah, it's the porno. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so he's like, I think you could do it. He's like, give it a read. Think about it as a director this time. So I gave it a read and I'm looking at it going, okay, this fucking two dudes talking to each other for like 80% of the time. That's in my wheelhouse. That's all I ever do. I said the rest of the sequence, 20%, makes up three action sequences, which are definitely outside of my comfort zone, but not so much so that I'm like, oh, I can't get my head. It wasn't Avatar, for Christ's sakes, you know? We're not even close. It wasn't even Kevatar. It was just, it was like a, a half a car chase, half a foot chase, and some gun shootouts. And I was like, all right, on those days, I'll have to work a little harder. The rest of the time, though, I'm, I'm built for this. I know how to do this kind of thing. But I said to myself, 
unlike Zack and Mary in every movie before it, I will get into it, I will breathe and sweat it and fucking, look, you can like my shit or not like my shit, and there are people in both camps, but you have to agree, I am an absolute heart player. You can sit there and be like, God, the movie's got a lot of heart. No talent, but a lot of heart, you know? <laughs> or vice versa, God, the movie's not good, but he's got a lot of heart. But it, it, you can see, I put everything into it. I don't just collect, collect a paycheck and move on and shit like that. But I said at this moment in time, so I get involved in this movie after Zack and Mary, Zack and Mary broke me. I am never going to be that invested in the future of a movie ever again. All I could do, sometimes you play the numbers game. And I've been playing the numbers game for, for 15 years now because I'm on the lower end of the scale, man. Some places people are like, hey, it's Kevin Smith. But in this business, they're like, oh, it's Kevin Smith. Hi. You know, and so basically I always have to step up my game to some degree if, if I want to be considered kind of a filmmaker by, by people who run the movie business and shit. Like, I got the love of the people, but studio-wise, they don't give a fuck about me. So here it is, me entering this world for the first time, and as my relationship with the wine scenes is ending, it looks like, okay, if I'm going to make movies in the future, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to start working with the studios. Let's try this out for the first time. But I was like, I'm not going through it like I ever went through it before. I will put everything I have into this movie, but when it's done, it's done. I'm going to get to a moment of bliss, and then I'm going to disconnect. And not like a turn off my back on the movie, but I don't care what it does. That's your fucking job. For 15 years, I believed it was my job to carry it over the fucking line, to make it gross, to make it earn, to go out there. And, and always felt shitty and horrible when it didn't fucking make $100 because that's the golden number. Why on earth did I think any of the bullshit I made should make $100 million? You know what I'm saying? It's not populist entertainment. It's bloggy. I didn't make films, man. All those years, people were like, you're not a director. And I'd be like, yeah, I am. They're right. I wasn't a director. They're fucking dicks for saying it. But they're, they're right. I wasn't a guy who was a director. I was doing rip open his chest, pull up fatty chunks of heart, put it on a platter, and put it up on a projector screen, and tell people, and be like, what do you think? And people who felt it and identified with me, oh, they'd love it. And they'd be like, you're such a great filmmaker. And the rest of the people would be like, it's not a film. This guy is completely untalented. But they don't see it the way that those other people see it. Because those people who are hardcore fans of my stuff are built like me. We're emotional, emo little baby children. You know what I mean? And the movie, and we like jokes. And we like to make fun of stuff. And the movie appeals to us on that level. The people that don't agree with that shit, they're just like, I don't identify with it. For years, they've been like, ew, he's not a filmmaker. They're absolutely right. Those aren't films. Those are blogs as cinema, kind of. This is a movie. For the first time, I could stand back by this and be like, hands down, this is what most everyone on the planet agrees a movie is. And it was nice to be able to do that after 15 years to see if I could do it. And, you know, there'll be lots of people going, hey, man, you've been making films for years. Stop being a dickhead, chasing Amy Berlin, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, it's not that. Everyone, I'm, I know. I've been a movie fan my whole life. I've been a movie fan longer than I've been a movie maker. And for me, it's like, I just wanted to test myself and see if I could swim in, with sharks. You know what I'm saying? Like, the one, the one analogy I've been using the most lately, is, and, and it's going to be tired. Well, in, in the States, they go, huh? But here, they might go, oh, I see. <laughs> for 15 years, I've been playing with WHA. This is my first NHL game. It's a much faster game. It's much different. It's the same game, ostensibly. But it's way fucking different. It's the big leagues. And whether you fetishize the big leagues or not, there's a difference up there. And to be able to make one in there, in that world, and have them go like, hey, this is good enough for us to put our dopey logo on, for some reason that was really important to me at this time in my life. After Zach and Mary, that's what I needed more than anything else. Completely recharged my batteries, and now you're all are fucked because I'm here for another 15. Until the heart gives out from all the weight. Richard Krause.